Hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm so delighted and honored to be here facilitating the solar eclipse ceremony, specifically about retrieving your soul's medicine. That was the very specific mission, the very specific assignment, the very specific intention for this ceremony. Of course, we know that the eclipses and so many astrological events are such powerful portals. And I was sharing before, you know, when I was here a little bit early with some people that I hadn't planned consciously. I didn't know I was going to be doing something today on the eclipse. If you notice a lot of time, a lot of times on those days, I actually will teach a class the day before or the day after because my soul has really guided me to kind of block off that time for me to just kind of have for me to receive and connect and align. So I thought it was going to be the same thing. But then I really think it was this pilgrimage to Mexico City, which, of course, everything was divinely designed. And going to see the pyramids and spending time in so many sacred sites, of course, at the Pyramid of the Moon and the Pyramid of the Sun, there were so many, so much that was activated for me. I'm truly still integrating all of that. And when I was, when we arrived on Thursday, very exhausted because it wasn't a getaway. It was a pilgrimage, right? It was, it was, yes, it was amazing. But yeah, it was one of those trips where you get back and you're like, oh my gosh, I need a week off. <laughs> But when I arrived, Our Lady of Guadalupe, because I felt such, I mean, as you all know, I feel such a connection to her, as many of you do. <clears throat> and being in Mexico City, it was like, oh my gosh, this whole other level of connecting with her and all her different aspects. And when I arrived, she was really like, the solar eclipse portal, the solar eclipse today is so powerful, which I already knew. And she was like, you must gather, gather together, put out the invitation and whoever comes, whoever's magnetized to it is meant to be there. And I surrender to it because Thursday, that wasn't a long time to promote, right? It was just like, here it goes. And here we have about 40 women all from all over the world. Of course, a lot from the U.S. Here I am anchoring the light in Mexico City, not in Mexico City, in Mexico, the country. And I don't know if there's anyone else from Mexico here on here, but we also, I think, have Sweden and France, I believe Australia, Denmark. We have so many uh, countries represented that are here. So thank you for saying yes. And thank you for anchoring the light wherever you are in the U.S. or where, whatever country you're in, because that's what Mother Mary was telling me. It was like, this is a day. It, it's very, it's going to sound trite. And like, but it's like to shine your light, to really turn it on and to use this portal to release the blocks that are in the way that are hiding different aspects of your soul's medicine. And so we're going to talk about that today and we're going to do some attunements, some activations, some blessings, you know, I'm an open channel for this. And I know you all are as well. Thank you, Emily in Chicago, anchoring the light Canada. Okay, there's another country as well. Denmark, thank you so much. And so I want to show you uh, before I go into this a little more. Hello, Jan, Gail is every time I look at the list, I'm like, there's more people and Karen. So glad you're here, all of you. So I want to show you the cards that came out from the Mother Mary Oracle. So the first one, and this card, I've had this Oracle deck by Alana Fairchild for years and years and years and years. And through some of the darkest times in my life, this deck has been so helpful to me. I feel like it's really a way for the Divine Mother and her aspect as Mother Mary to talk to us. Of course, we can connect directly with her. We don't need Oracle cards. But sometimes when we're really stressed, when we're really feeling anxiety, when we're our egos really has a grasp of our brain and our thoughts, Oracle cards can be really powerful. And this was one of my favorite cards to receive when I was going through some really, really challenging times. And it's Our Lady Who Prevents Interference. Look at her. Our Lady Who Prevents Interference. And this card, the whole message is exactly what it says. It basically says you are getting brighter. You have so much light to share with the world. and because you have so much light, all these lovely, amazing people are going to be magnetized to you, right? Like moths to a flame, light. 
And there's also going to be people who want to clamp down your light or want to uh, take it for themselves or whatever it is. And, and this is all shared without judgment. It's just where people are in their consciousness sometimes. And so her, this Mother Mary card comes very strongly when we're about to step into this next level of our radiance of sharing our medicine. And she's saying, I'm here protecting you. I'm going to prevent any interference, not just from external people, but from our own egoic mind, from our own wounding, from our own programming, because often we are the ones actually that hold ourselves back the most, right? It's all of that trauma, all of that wounding that keeps us small or keeps us limited, like, oh, you can only be this happy, or it can only be this good, or you can only have this amount of abundance, or you can only help this amount of people, or you can only take this little risk. No, it's like, we're here to fully shine forth. So our lady who prevents interference is here. I only meant to pull one and then three popped out. So we got also Our Lady of the Ocean of Rebirth. Look at her. Right? So rebirth, ocean of rebirth. There is a rebirth happening today. And it's not just happening today. It's hap it's been it's been a process, not just from the lunar eclipse because the lunar eclipse to the solar eclipse is a bridge, but it for many of you, for many of us, it's been going on for years and years and years, for lifetimes even, right? That you, there's been parts of us that have had to die, that we've had to release, that, you know, this dark nights of the soul that we've had to go through, often, as Sophia is sharing, our own interference, right? Our own self-judgment, our own self-berating, our own impatience with ourselves. And here, Mother Mary is saying, Today, there is a rebirth. We are being born again. And we do that again. Remember the title, the design of today's ceremony is retrieving. I, I was just going to call it soul retrieval because that's what came really strongly to me. But then when I tuned in, Our Lady of Guadalupe was like, no, you need to add soul's medicine retrieval. That's what is being retrieved today. And remember, your soul's medicine, what is that? That is those, that unique elixir, let's say, that is made up of your soul's essence, right? Remember, the divine made you unique, made you different than anybody else. You're a unique fingerprint, a unique hologram of the divine. That's one of the gifts that we received Nobody was gifted more than other people. I know the world makes us believe that, but it's absolutely not true. What kind of God or creator would we have if, if goddess, if God, if the divine was like, okay, I'm going to give this person more gifts and this person little gifts. That's not how it works. We're all these beautiful reflections of the divine, unique reflections. So that's one part of your soul's medicine. But then the other part is combined of your earthly life, all of the initiations, the challenges, the dark nights of the soul. And yes, also the celebrations, the gifts, the joyful times, those tend to be easier to integrate. It's those experiences where we had to dig ourselves out of the mud of other people's expectations, abuse, and so on. Again, because they're unconscious, because they're wounded themselves and our own self-berating, our own lack of self-love. And so all of that put together creates your unique soul's medicine, right? That journey that you've been on. <clears throat> and this has been lifetimes, lifetimes and lifetimes and lifetimes. And I know that if you are here, whether you're here live or you're watching the replay, you're already sharing your gifts. And if in this moment, career is not specifically the thing you're focused on, that's okay. It could be your creative projects. It could be how you're parenting. It could be how you're being in the world. But if you're here, I know you already have been sharing your medicine and yet there's always the next level. There, there's no place to land while we're human. There's no arrival. There's no like, oh, I arrived. I'm sharing my medicine. That's it. No. There's always more to be released, more to be revealed, more to be uncovered. And that's what we're here for because the Divine Mother said, your light is so needed in the world 
that we're going to gather together on this eclipse. And, you know, I love Our Lady of Guadalupe. You know, I've been looking, I have this in my bedroom. So like from my bed, I can see it. I brought it here for today. But, you know, she's got a sun behind her. And she's stepping on the moon. I was like, wow, I never thought about this. It's like an eclipse image with the Divine Mother, right? And she's like, and, you know, she is bringing these blessings, right? She's bringing this solar light. Yes, the moon goes in front of the sun, covers it. I won't go into all the science of it, but if you think of it spiritually, it's this, what happens is this intensifying of the divine downloads that could come through us to this through the spiritual sun. And just let those words land and you don't have to intellectually understand them, but it's just to know like, okay, there's these divine codes that are always available to us. And yet on these sacred days like today, there's a, a wider opening. And when we gather together, there's an even wider opening. So whether you're here live or you're watching the replay, we're all together creating this huge container to receive this divine light pouring through us so that it can dissolve the blocks to you really sharing different, deeper, more authentic, purer aspects of your medicine. And so I'm going to share the last card of Mother Mary, Our Lady of New Vision. And so what is this card about? This card is basically saying whatever vision you've had of your soul's medicine, whatever you thought you knew about what you're here to do or your capabilities or your gifts or how good it can get for you, how blessed it can get for you, She's like, she's like, get rid of that vision because there's a new vision. This is Mother Mary saying, I have such a high bar for you, but not from a judgy, impatient place. I know some of us have that trauma, right? Whether with whoever had power over us, right? Where it felt like we were never enough. We weren't good enough. We weren't. That's not what she's talking about. It's not that. It's the Divine Mother, right? It's her gaze that she can see you. Our Lady of Guadalupe, Mother Mary, whatever aspect you connect with as a Divine Mother, maybe for you it's Kuan Yin or, or just the, the Divine Mother. She sees you, like she sees the true you. She sees the burdens. She sees the programming and she looks at that with so much compassion right there's no judgment there's no impatience and then she can see through that and see oh this this is the light you're really meant to share here with the world this is what it looks like this is what you look like fully turned on illuminated radiant and she understands that is scary because in this lifetime and other lifetimes we have often been punished abused even killed right that has happened in many lifetimes for shining our light that brightly so i love that she comes with this hey i'm here to prevent any interference again and i keep hearing her again saying but let's be honest with ourselves and really know that the biggest interference often comes from our own programming. And so that's what we're up to today. I want to introduce myself because I know there's actually several people signed up who are new to me. So my name is Lisa Espinosa. I am a spiritual career coach. That label is so, it's just the best I can come up with right now. <laughs> but what is it that I do is I help my clients, I help my students, I hope all of you who show up who are drawn to my medicine to really one, identify what are the parts of you or the thoughts or the programming or the burdens or the trauma that is really blocking you, stifling you, censoring your soul's medicine in some way. There's no shame. Literally every human has this. 
It's not because you're defective or you're weak or you're too sensitive. It's because you're a human and you're here and we are a divine, we're actually divine beings having a human experience. So part of my work with my clients is first helping you identify that. Like what are, you know, for some of you, it might be more with that parts language. What is that part of me that's still hurting, that still needs so much of my love, that really needs my compassion so that I can move forward? For others of you, it might be more, more working on, you know, what, what is the programming? What is that code running through my DNA that keeps me in this place? That is not the place where I'm ultimately meant to be. And this is hereditary. This is intentionally programmed into us by forces who want to keep us down. And so that's very important work. It's very courageous work. And of course, I also hope you connect, most importantly, right? Connect with your soul's guidance, connect, know, get to intimately know your soul, know your spirit guides. Again, so that you become that disciple that student of your soul, that ambassador of your soul, that radiant light that's reflecting your soul's medicine in the world because the medicine, the world needs it so much. And so I tuned us in before we started, but let's take a moment to do it together. Take a few cleansing breaths. Bring yourself to this moment. If any part of you is distracted, just set that intention of calling back all of your energy, your heart turning on like a magnet, calling back all of the different parts of you. And then at the same time, see those roots of light going down your legs and out the bottoms of your feet deep into the earth and already start to release at that intention that you're releasing anything that is not yours, any of the old programming, any of the lies, any of the filters, any of the sensors, any of the stifling. And Mother Earth is so generous and so joyful to help you with this. This doesn't pollute her. Right? When we release in this conscious way, it blesses her. And so we're deeply grounded and your heart is open, turned on like a magnet. And I call on this beautiful circle of grace, circle of empowerment, circle of miracles, circle of bliss, circle of transformation to surround our whole circle today whether you're here live or watching on the replay. And I know that each of you bring your own medicine, you bring your own allies, your own enlightened ancestors. And to be clear, what is welcome in this container today is only those divine beings that love you unconditionally. They have no agenda. They have no expectation. All they are here for is they are here to love you unconditionally. They are here as your mirror if you choose that. In other words, that they can mirror back to you how wonderful and beautiful and radiant and divine you are. And some of them are here as your mentors. Again, if you choose to, you are sovereign. So all of these divine beings that are welcome here, that are actually just allowed here are only the ones that honor your sovereignty and love you unconditionally. And so the circle of grace is placed around our whole container. I welcome your guardian angels that love you unconditionally. I really am feeling the angelic light here today. And I ask that before coming in, I asked, why am I feeling, I mean, I know it's not weird, obviously the angels are always present, but I was really, really feeling them. And then the angels were saying to me that they're teaching us about 
surrendering to divine will. I know there are some traditions that say that angels don't have will, that they just follow the divine. That's just how they were created. But I actually, when another teacher of mine presented a different viewpoint, that's what resonated with me, which is that angels, they are angelic because they also have a will. They are sovereign as well. And they have chosen to fully surrender their will to the divine. That is what makes them angelic. And so when I heard that, I was like, oh, that speaks to me so profoundly. And so the angels are really coming close today because this retrieval of your soul's medicine asks from us to do the same. Now we're not angels yet, right? We have an ego structure. We're here on the earth plane. So it's a process, but even setting the intention, like how much can you surrender? How much more can you surrender to the divine will today? And that is your sovereign choice. It's not for me. It's not for anyone else. You tune into that question in this moment. How much am I willing to surrender into the divine today? And of course, what comes up is the programming that makes us fear God, fear the divine, fear that if we surrender to the divine, we're going to suffer or all these things are going to be taken away from us. It's all this religious programming. But remember, this is the divine paradox. Your true will is aligned with the divine will. The only thing that can make us truly happy is aligning with the divine will. Like, So we're actually at war with ourselves when we're fighting it. And it's one of the most challenging things of being human. And so there's no shame. There's no impatience from the angels or the ascended masters. There's only love because they understand how courageous it was for us to incarnate in this world. And so I feel the angels surrounding all of us. And of course, I welcome the Ascended Masters, specifically, of course, Mother Mary. Beautiful white buffalo woman and Isis and Hathor and Green Tara and Mary Magdalene and Kuan Yin and so many others. I'm feeling Lakshmi and Kali Ma. And I welcome the divine masculine ascended masters, including beautiful Jesus, Maha Avatar Babaji, beautiful Buddha, and so many others. And I'm hearing them all say, the angels and the ascended masters, let them do the heavy lifting. All that is required is your intention, is your... your pure prayer to be of service in a way that blesses you. And when I say pure, I don't mean all that religious baggage. Pure meaning that the ego is not in the way. That you're just like, okay, I have this. You wouldn't be here if you didn't have an intention of service. Now you might call it leadership. You might call it helping, whatever you want to call it. Now you might also be you might have parts that are like, ew, service, no, I'm so overwhelmed with service. I've done so much already. I tend to start to rescue people. I mean, I've dealt with that. I help a lot of my clients with that. And so this isn't codependent service. When we're in ceremony, we are talking about true service, which means that you see the light within everyone, no matter how wounded they may look or appear. You know they have a soul, you know they have their guides, and it is not your job to rescue them or take their pain away. It is your job to be the light, to remind them of who they are in whatever way that is, whether it's just by your presence, it might be part of your service to pray for them, it might be more intentional. Maybe you're a coach, a therapist, and there are you know people who you're absolutely meant to help that will be such a blessing for you.
And so if you are here, that has been your prayer I'm hearing for lifetimes. And maybe it's through music, through art. Maybe it's through something that you minimize, that you're like, oh, this isn't so important. I'm just thinking about making jewelry or I'm just doing my little drawings or I'm just doing my little music or I just want to post on, on Facebook these little things to make people happy. And maybe you're thinking that's not enough. And that should be the first clue that that isn't your soul speaking. And so we're going to step into this releasing right now. And I had written on here, I'm, I have the bullet points that I wrote for the description, energy healing to help you forgive everyone and everything. That was something I heard Jesus tell me years ago. I was trying to figure out how long ago it was. I think it must have been like seven years ago in one of my coaching sessions. Like I was the client and I was in the middle of an inner journey healing a bunch of trauma and all the things and as often was the case in my inner healing Jesus would often show up it would often be Jesus or Mother Mary I was very connected with that line and not a Jesus in a dogmatic religious way but Jesus in his ascended master form and that day he showed up and he said forgive everyone and everything and I was like what? And it was so interesting because I simultaneously completely understood that and also had a strong resistance to it. So I under I think my divinity understood like, oh yeah, I need to forgive everyone and everything. That was so interesting. It was not just everyone, it was everyone and everything. And then of course, the parts of me that had been wounded and by so by different people, was like, what does that mean? Does that mean that I'm saying it was okay that what they did or that I'm going to make myself vulnerable and be to be hurt again? There was all of that. And of course, that's not what Jesus was talking about, obviously. So I want to clarify that as we go into this healing. There is a simultaneous path. You will know what it is for you. Right, so you might be at the point that you've already done so much inner work with your therapist, with your coach on your own, that there are things that you really feel like, okay, I, not that you're saying what was done to you was okay, but that you feel complete with that journey of forgiveness. There's other things that I think it will take us a lifetime or lifetimes to get to that point. But that doesn't mean we can't step into the resonance of forgiveness. So what I mean is that we can simultaneously know I'm still working on this with this situation, this experience. I'm not going to bypass. I'm not going to force myself to forgive anyone. I'm going to do that inner work and my soul is going to guide me to the support I need for that. And at the same time, I can tune into that divine frequency of forgiving everyone and everything because this is what Jesus and Mother Mary said is to free yourself. It's not for them at all. It's to free yourself. And what Mother Mary said was that this is one of the sticky points, the, the, the tar that keeps our soul's medicine like blocked. And some of this includes forgiving ourselves. In fact, I'm hearing that might be the biggest hurdle. That might be the thing that you're here to do today, to come, to forgive yourself, not because you've actually done anything wrong, but because we're human. And in, in this human journey of polarity, we experience judgment of ourselves. We experience disappointment with ourselves even though our soul is looking at all of it and understand that it's understands that it's all been divine. So remember the divine is full of paradox. 
And so as we begin, I invite you to bring your hand over your heart. And as you breathe into your heart, notice your heart spiraling open. It's like a, almost looks like a propeller, but like a beautiful flower. It's spiraling, spiraling, spiraling until it opens. Like I see like these beautiful windows, shutters that open and all this light is pouring out, but your hand is still there. And as this light is pouring out, you also notice that there's some darkness, some heaviness, some constricted energy. It's attachments to past pain, past trauma, past wounding. And just notice it just for a moment. Don't see if you can not resist it, not try to fix it either. Just observe, just have your soul show you an image of your heart. All this light coming out of your heart center. But then you start to notice there's also these like dark, thick, maybe they look like dark little rocks or like tar or dark smoke but just notice, or maybe it's just like a tight ball. Let's all of us together, let's just notice it. Just keep breathing and then ask yourself, show me, show me an image of this unforgiveness, whether it's towards yourself or towards someone else. And you don't need to get caught up in any story unless your soul feels it's important. But just notice the image the symbols that your soul is showing you in your heart. So like mine, what I'm seeing is like these dark meteorites. It, it looks very like space, like all this light coming out, like the starlight, but then there's these like dark clusters of these like heavy rocks. And so I'm seeing that also floating in this universe of my heart. So notice what is floating in the universe of your heart. Notice the light, but also notice any of the heaviness or tightness. And then bring your hand down. And we welcome Ascended Master Jesus. Now you are sovereign. If that does not feel comfortable to you, you can invite any other divine being. But please know that Ascended Master Jesus shows up here without any religious dogma or doctrine. He's holding the divine masculine flame that so honors the divine feminine. And so he stands before you, his heart, like, like a sun at his heart center. And he has so much compassion for you, so much love, so much understanding. There is no judgment, there is no impatience. But he also has this very laser-like focus that can see what those dark energies, constricted energy in your heart that is blocking your medicine. So he asks you, if you would be willing to receive a healing from him today. And the healing, really, all it's going to be is his heart is so magnetic, it's going to magnetize to him all this dark, heavy energy. 
And you don't need to worry about overwhelming him because he is a fully Christed being. And so all of that dissolves in the grace of his heart. But if your answer is yes, just open. Maybe you lie down or maybe you just feel your shoulders relax as your heart opens and just all of that pain, betrayal, closing of your heart, mistrust, berating of yourself, impatience with yourself, shame, whatever it is, let it float into his beautiful Christed heart. Keep releasing. Notice if there's parts that are holding on. So sometimes, even though we might have a prayer to clear our heart, there's parts of us that are scared of doing it, that feel they'll be vulnerable or unprotected. And Mother Mary, in her lady who prevents interference, Mother Mary shows up and she says, I've got you. I will be your protection. So reassure your parts. Have you know She sends them love. Again, you're a sovereign being, so you can pause at any moment. But if you feel safe to continue, Mother Mary's reassuring you, I've got you. I am here. I will be the protection of your heart. And so as her son takes, absorbs all of this betrayal, guilt, shame, trauma, programming, brainwashing, other people's shame, other people's expectations, other people's programming. Let your heart become empty of this. And Mother Mary comes now, she's still here as her form of Our Lady who prevents interference, but she's reminding me now she's also here in her form as Our Lady of the Ocean of Rebirth. So this is what happens. And she's saying, "You, the rebirth cannot happen when we're still holding these. So let them flow out of you into the heart of Ascended Master Jesus. And if there's a part of you that wants to understand, oh, I want to understand what are these? Where did it come from? What is it? Let that go. Give yourself permission to allow this to be easy. And your soul is saying, reassuring you, do not worry. If there is a story you need to remember, if there is something you need to know, you will know it. So in this moment, just allow the healing, all of these little boulders, all of these little meteorites, all of this heavy smoke I'm seeing. For some of you, it's like tar. For some of you, it's literally other people. I'm seeing like little people float out of your heart. I know that sounds odd. This is remember, um, our soul speaks to us in symbolism. But what this is showing me is that there's parts of other people that you're carrying in your heart, whether it's family, clients, students. And let them go. Let it go. This is a service to them as well. Just let it be released as we step into this ocean of rebirth. We're going deeper into the universe of your heart. There was a lot of release there at the surface, but now we're going deeper, deeper, deeper. Like really, let's be courageous together. Let's be ambitious is what I'm hearing. Ambitious in the best sense of the word of like, yeah, let's be efficient. We're here together on this powerful solar eclipse. Why, you, why waste more time? Why wait another year, even another week? Let's go deeper, deeper into the universe of your heart, deeper, 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 and find that wound, that core wound. Again, you don't need to know the story. Don't get caught up in that unless it's easily shown to you. Don't get caught up in like, what is it? Is this this? Is it that? Just let that go. But go deeper, deeper, deeper. And it's almost like I see almost like kind of like, like swimming through space. And there's this like, one spot, this tender, deep wound. I just see it as a shard of glass. But for you, it might be different. Yeah. 
And just let's set that intention if you're willing. That intention that I'm I'm willing to experience the deepest healing of my heart, the deepest healing I've ever experienced until now, up to this moment. I am willing to release the most pain and suffering and programming and blocks that I've ever released before. And the angel stands so close to you, so close to you, reassuring you they've got you, they love you. And so if that is your intention, set that intention as this, For I see this shard of glass just like, it's just ejected out or whatever it is for you. Dark smoke, I see dark liquid, dark, just heavy. And immediately the angels come in and fill that space with light, your own holy light. And so Our Lady of Guadalupe stands behind you as the sun. She stands behind you as the sun. She stands behind you as the sun. Feel those rays of light that are filling every area of your heart that had all that darkness and heaviness. It is now filled with these golden rays of light. As we step into the reclamation, the retrieval of your soul's medicine, Our Lady of New Vision steps forward, Mother Mary in her aspect of Our Lady of New Vision. She's got those beautiful birds of peace, like doves of peace around her third eye. Our Lady of New Vision. And so with Our Lady of Guadalupe behind you as the sun, Ascended Master Jesus has taken all of that that was released and sent it to the light. And now your soul stands before you, your soul, your higher self. Your true essence, whatever name you want to use. And it is showing itself as a tree. It's the symbol of a big, beautiful, stunning, illuminated tree. And you can see in the trunk of the tree, this is like an otherworldly tree. It's your soul. And as you look up at the foliage, at the branches, at the leaves, you realize, oh my gosh, that is all my soul's medicine from different lifetimes, from this lifetime, from future lifetimes. See how beautiful this tree is and how it's bearing the most delicious, beautiful fruit and flowers. And as you look, there's all these golden paths going towards your tree and you see all of these people, these pilgrimage of people that are like, oh, we're going towards that tree. It has the medicine we need. And now remember, this is not, and in fact, this is getting cleared right now. If you have any burdens of codependency, of feeling like you will be smothered or overwhelmed by needy people or whatever it is, that's not what this is. releasing that programming, but see how the world responds to your medicine. See how some people are meant to come very close to your tree and some people just looking at it heals them. Just looking at it, they're like, oh, that's such a beautiful tree. And it, they receive a healing. Or for some people, they just receive the fragrance of the beautiful fruit and flowers. And that's enough for them. 
So notice how this tree that is your soul with all of your soul's medicine activated, notice how it heals and elevates the world. And then notice all the trees of all the people and their soul's medicine activated. And notice how that ushers in this new earth that we are all here to birth. And notice these people that are so drawn to your tree, your medicine, as they get closer, they start to look at themselves and realize, oh my gosh, I'm a tree as well. I have medicine too. And so as you look at this tree, this new vision, really pay attention to this tree. There's a bridge of light being built from your heart to the heart of this tree. There's a bridge of light. And as that bridge of light is connected, you have this bridge of light connected. Remember, Our Lady of Guadalupe is like the sun behind you. Ascended Master Jesus is there still standing to the side. You've released the lot, but if anything else comes to be released, it goes right into his Christed heart. And this bridge of light from your heart to the heart of this tree. And look at the tree, look at the fruit, look at the branches, look at the leaves. You're amazed at how much medicine is there. And now that this bridge has been built, we are all retrieving these aspects of our medicine that we simply couldn't receive before because our heart was so filled with pain, with constriction. There's no shame, there's no judgment. It's just part of this journey. And so now that we've made the space, you notice the tree starting to light up and different branches of the tree are really lighting up and they're like lightning bolts. They come down to the heart of the tree through the bridge into your heart. You are retrieving your medicine. Let that happen. Maybe all the branches do that. Maybe it's several different ones. Don't try to control it. Allow it. Remember, your soul would not... Allow this to unfold if you weren't ready for it. So if there's a part that's trying to control it, that's like, oh, wait, I don't know if I'm not ready for that. Don't worry. If you're not ready for it, it's not going to come to your heart. But in this moment, I just see everybody standing with their tree in front of them, that bridge of light connecting the heart of your tree to your heart. And the branches are like so happy, so filled with light. And they're like whoosh, going into your heart. Retrieve that medicine. I am willing, so you can say that mantra, that affirmation, I am willing to receive my soul's medicine. I am willing to anchor it into my heart. I am willing to anchor it into the world. I am willing to share my medicine with others. I am willing to be seen in my radiance. I am willing to be protected by the Divine Mother as I shine more radiantly than I've ever shown before. Keep receiving more of your medicine, more aspects of your medicine than you've ever allowed yourself to receive. Remember, you wouldn't be here. This wouldn't be happening if you weren't ready for it. Receive those gifts, receive those answered prayers for yourself and for the world. Receive the joy. I am willing to be joyful as I share my medicine. I am willing to experience bliss as I share my medicine. I understand. This is coming really strongly for us to know. I understand that some people will judge my medicine, that some people will be jealous of my medicine, that some people will belittle my medicine. And I understand that that is just coming from their own wounded parts that are doing that to their own medicine. So in this moment, we're setting that intention that when that happens, we're just going to remember this moment and know like, oh, yeah, I'm going to send them compassion and keep shining my light. 
I'm going to send them compassion and not believe that my medicine is insignificant. I'm going to send them compassion and not let their judgment of my medicine censor mine. I'm going to have compassion for them. And if I notice jealousy, I'm going to have compassion. I know that it is just their parts wanting to embrace their own medicine. And if our own heart is ever filled with jealousy or comparison, right? Compare and despair, as they say. We're going to come to this moment and remember, oh, that's just coming from my parts. My parts that have wounds still. I just need to send them love. I don't need to be ashamed. I don't need to hide that. I also don't need to let those parts run the show. But I can know like, oh, I'm just human. It's just my human parts. I can send them love. And come back and connect to this tree. And so as you stand in front of this tree, one question to ask in this moment, beautiful soul, here as you stand here with Our Lady of Guadalupe, with all of your beautiful guides around you on the solar eclipse portal, where the veils are so thin, where we're anchoring the light, not just for ourselves, but for the world, ask beautiful soul, what do you want me to know right now about my soul's medicine? What do you want me to know? How do I nurture it? How do I share it? How do I love it more? Because this is what I'm hearing that some of us don't even love our medicine. Maybe we love a little part of it, but we don't, that's part of the programming. So many of us don't even love our own medicine. We belittle it, we doubt it, we question it, we hide it. And so that question is so important. How do I love my medicine? Teach me, how can I love it? And then how is my medicine? healing the world how is my medicine healing the world and be prepared for parts that might be like no it's not it's too little you're not important enough we're sending them love the divine is reminding all of us that she gifted each of us equally and that each of us is part of the answered prayer for humanity. So ask again that question, how is my medicine healing the world? And so take some deep breaths as the roots of your tree connect with the roots of your, of your physical being. And there's a deep grounding that's happening right now. Grounding, 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 grounding. Your soul is integrating all of this across all four levels of your being, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, across all dimensions of time. Remember, you also received medicine from your future. As you step back fully into your physical body, You feel this beautiful cloak of stars being placed across your shoulders. A gift from Our Lady of Guadalupe. But all the angels 
recalibrating your energy body for your everyday activities. And in feeling still that protection of Mother Mary, Our Lady who prevents interference. You have her blessing, you have her grace, you have her protection. And at your third eye, see that Our Lady of New Vision. Even if you didn't receive the vision yet, it is there. And then at your sacral chakra, Our Lady of the Ocean of Rebirth. Coming back. Gently stretching your body. Drinking some water, writing anything down that you need to write down. <clears throat> and if you want to share anything that came to you, either from those questions of how do you nurture your soul's medicine, how do you share it? How do you love it? I love that question. I've never thought of that before. But when it came forward, I was like, oh my gosh, yeah. So many of us have been programmed not to love our medicine, to think other people have better medicine than me or or it has to be perfect or whatever. You know, it's like, mm, Summer, I love that. How am I healing the world piece by piece? Yes. Absolutely. Thank you, Katie. Yeah, I really felt that clearing was so powerful. And that connecting with the tree. Remember, you're going to receive the replay so you can continue that on your own. Of Yeah, of just receiving those other aspects of your medicine. I'm curious if anybody received any specifics around that. For me, it was a lot of energetics. I, I was definitely more consciously aware of the things that were being released. I want to remind you, I was going to say this in the beginning, that I am offering so the free breakthrough consultation. I have new spots for April. So if you're interested in that, I would love to talk to you and just kind of take you through this very loving and clarifying process to help you identify like what, what is your soul trying to tell you right now? What is your path? What are the blocks that are there? And what is the simple way forward? Right. I would love to talk. I'll put the link. I'll send the link with the replay. I'll put it here right now too. Lorenza wrote, um, Wait, Sophia wrote, loving my medicine, that feels like an action step. Absolutely, yes. I feel like for me, if I put that as a result, I want to love my medicine, then I would need to write down first, what are all the unloving thoughts I have about my medicine, which I didn't even know were there, <clears throat> right? So just if anybody else wants to do that exercise, yeah, you might check like, okay, wait, how do I feel about my medicine? Even if you have a thought like, well, I don't know what it is. Do I have it? I'm not sure what it is. I'm confused. Like write all that down because, you know, this wasn't like, how do you feel all right about your medicine? It's like, how do I love my medicine? Lorenza, how is my medicine healing the world through love? Yes. So beautiful. Thank you, Lorenza. I didn't hear a word, more lights and colors, symbol type things. Yes. I find the same summer. It was like, I didn't, when I was releasing, and I, a part of it, I'm also cooked connecting to the collective of what everyone's releasing, but I wasn't seeing words. Yeah, I was seeing a lot of symbols, a lot of rock, rocky, meteorite energy, and like um, some like dark, uh, almost like, like lava when it cools off, but like that just coming out. So I was seeing a lot of that. Pernil, I had trouble concentrating, but really felt releasing a lot. Yes. Yeah. And sometimes that happens, you know, it's so interesting. Like, I've had so many inner journeys when other people are leading it, like somewhere I'm totally like, oh my gosh, I just went to a different world. I don't even know what happened. And then I have others where I'm like, my mind was all over the place. 
And either way is perfect because your soul, the healing, the downloads, the insights are all coming in and you'll just become aware of them at exactly the right time. So thank you, everyone. Let me, um, did I put, I want to read some of these others. Um, sorry, I'm having a little a little internet thingy here of course hold on a second it's the eclipse portal <laughs> where are you all okay sorry i was getting some weird message okay what is happening all right let me read Okay, Katie, released, surrendered. Yes, Patty, my medicine is part of my third eye opening fully to for knowing and vision. Also uncovering container around part of my soul's medicine and releasing fear of harm to others. Oh my gosh, Patty, thank you so much for sharing that. That is such a huge fear that we, so many of us that are in this priestess path or this healer path, oh my gosh, do we have that block. I don't want to hurt people. I don't want to harm people. I don't want to be so powerful that I will do that or become narcissistic or whatever, all those things. It, it, it's so devious because it really connects with such a pure place. Cause obviously we don't want to hurt anyone. I don't want to hurt anyone. Like that's such a beautiful intention. And yet it's been used against us. Right. So I love that you saw a container and exploring that more. Karen, my medicine is healing the world through love and forgiveness. Beautiful, Karen. I love that. And it's like, you know, when we say that healing the world through love, like I feel like, well, we know the ego structure can dismiss that as so cliche or not important enough, but really that's what it all is, right? That's exactly what it is. And so then the question becomes, what does that look like in my life? If I'm here to heal through love and forgiveness, what does that look like in my personal life? What does that look like in my professional life? Even like, is there a class I'm, I'm teaching about this or is there artwork that I'm, I'm sharing that embodies this, right? It's like, and it's not in an intellectual question. This is really coming. I know we're going over time a little bit right now, but this is really coming on strongly right now that it's like, so many of these are not in, not questions to ask the intellect because the intellect will just spin and spin and spin and spin. It's questions to ask your soul. So for Karen, it would be like, how am I meant right now with my offerings or my classes or my life? How do I bring that to the next level, this teaching of love and forgiveness? Right? And our soul always gives us simpler, more efficient, often quite surprising answers. Our ego mind will be like, oh my gosh, you need to go get training on forgiveness. You need to go do this. You need to get your blah, 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 you know, all this stuff. But that's not how it is. It's like the world needs this now. Sophia, thank you, Karen, for sharing. I received the awareness that my medicine is what the world has punished me for. Yes. And kind of that I need to turn it around in my perception. Yes, Sophia, thank you so much. So many of us have that. We have been punished for our medicine. We have been belittled for our medicine. We have been made fun of or shamed or envied or all the things it's so true and so we need to normalize that like we need to see it we need to have compassion for ourselves and for the people who did it we might have done that too in some lifetime who knows and then we just need to yeah it's just kind of like okay that's over there of course in this world with so much polarity and pain and suffering of course we would be punished for our medicine. It's awful and terrible. I'm not saying it should happen, but it's like when we understand that is a symptom of this upside down world, but then we're here to heal that. So thank you, Sophia. Jojo, I love my medicine without the ego censoring. I don't need to understand everything. Yeah, oh my gosh, Jojo. Well, if we could tattoo ourselves with that, I don't need to understand everything. We can't, literally cannot understand everything. Not from with our human mind. So yes, yes, Michelle, I am still processing, but wow, just what, oh, I'm so glad. 
It was also powerful and held so much beauty. I'm so glad, Michelle. And I will have your channeled reading. <laughs> I have it on my post-it. Um, I wanted to show everybody. I forgot to show you guys. Look at this new crystal I got. This is like, they. I love that they glued angel wings to it. So you all know when I saw this, like on Friday, I was like, oh my gosh. But it's this like angel quartz. And of course, as I saw it, I was like, oh my gosh, this must be part of our ceremony. So anyway, this beautiful crystal was was here anchoring the angelic light all right my dear so i'm just gonna pull a few cards and then we will be done thank you so much for being here and like i said i would love love to talk to you if you're feeling like you need help and you know consistently following your soul's guidance if you feel like there's this block or there's this burden or there's this like programming there's something in there and i need help i would love to talk to you i'll send you the link i thought i could paste it here but i literally cannot find it so we shall i shall send it to you and but you could always go to my website um under free session and the link should be there all right let's pull a priestess card and um angels and ancestors angels and ancestors yes okay so let's say this is for everyone and i'm just we're asking for a message from our beautiful soul about your beautiful medicine what does our soul want us to know oh my gosh okay beautiful go with the flow letting go cleansing receiving letting go cleansing receiving this feels like we literally what we just did let it go right all of that stuff that was floating out cleansing it and then you're receiving your medicine and of course the next step would be then you just radiate it naturally right so beautiful and then i'll just do the angels and ancestors and then we will be done Oh, you're welcome, Karen. Hello, mm -hmm. Jill. All right. Oh, and I do want to remind you, Wednesdays, I'll be doing my YouTube lives. Last week, I was out of town, so I didn't do it there. But this week is going to be all about you are an oracle. I'm going to have a lot of my oracle decks out that day to stimulate your own oracular gifts. Yeah. Mountains, stand your ground. Simple and to the point. Stand your ground. Be like that mountain. That's what we're being asked to do, to be, to anchor that light. Right? Walk the world like this beautiful mountain. Right? It's so connected to the heavens and so grounded and rooted. It's like nothing shakes you. And this isn't about being hard or having walls around our heart at all. Remember, we have Our Lady who prevents interference around our heart. But this is that when you step into <clears throat> the illusion, when you step into self-doubt or confusion or other people's judgments or whatever, we are the mountain. We walk through the world that way. We affect the world, not the other way around. All right, bye everyone. Thank you so much. I will send the replay um, as soon as I can today. And please feel free to share it with anyone. I know sometimes it's not that way, but for this one, if you know someone that is like, they want to watch it, send it to them. <laughs> okay. And um, I will see you soon. Hopefully see you Wednesday. Next week is my free masterclass for April, which is all about your thoughts. How do you think thoughts of success? How do you actually sort through all the unnecessary thoughts and get to your genius, creative thoughts, your successful thoughts? Because we all have them, but they can get buried underneath so much. All right. So I should be sending my newsletter this week with all my events for April and all of that stuff. I'll see you soon. Talk to you soon. Bye, everyone. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad, Jill. Bye, Patty. Bye, Karen. All right.